Hey everybody, my name's Ed Trevers. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm an Anglican priest in the Diocese of Nova Scotia in Prince Edward Island. I get to serve in the beautiful town of Shelburne, Nova Scotia, in the awesome parish of Christ Church Shelburne that sits on the ancestral and on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. I give thanks for you all every day. I thank God especially for everything that you're teaching me and everything that you're sharing with me in your comments and in your emails. Today is going to be sermon time. I, I recently watched a couple of videos that, that really riled me up and then went searching for a passage that I remembered in the Bible. So I'm, I'm going to read that to you now. This comes from the second chapter of the letter of James. My brothers and sisters, as believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, don't show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, but a poor man comes in wearing shabby clothes. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but you say to the poor man, you sit there, or come, sit at my feet on the floor. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? I recently watched a video from... Um, bow of the, of the fifth column. And in it, he talks about how there are some sheriffs in California who are letting the world know that they are not going to enforce certain laws. They believe that the state of California has enacted restrictions that are far too oppressive, and they've said that they will not enforce them. Now, towards the end of that video, and, and I thought it was a a particularly good video. He goes on to draw a conclusion, again, at least a conclusion that I've seen, that if law enforcement are able to say they are not going to enforce certain laws, then they're demonstrating that they are actually capable of picking and choosing which laws they will, they will enforce. And if they can demonstrate which laws they are picking and choosing to enforce, then just rationally speaking, that would also mean that they are actually able to pick and choose to whom they will enforce, with whom they will enforce those laws and to what extent they will enforce those laws with the people they have chosen to enforce them with. Another, the other video I watched was with my wife. We watched a Trevor Noah, uh, The Daily Show video. And I'll include both of these in the description. And in it, uh, Trevor Noah shares the story of a fella in New York who uh, apparently because he, he had a dispute with a law enforcement officer about, um, about the COVID-19 restrictions, he ended up running over the law enforcement officer. A white guy ran over a cop and then was released from jail and Fox News pretty much apologized to him for what he had gone through because they they backed him up he wasn't in the wrong right Fox News law and order news this man wasn't in the wrong because these restrictions are too oppressive but then I also bumped into a story about a man of African descent who was shot by police for brandishing a weapon. Witnesses say he was holding a sandwich. This video isn't about picking on law enforcement, though they're obviously the focus here. I think what I'm actually trying to show is that this is this is a societal issue. It's not just law enforcement, right? It's not just law enforcement. It's a societal issue. We are showing favoritism. We show favoritism to people based on the color of their skin. We show favoritism based on, on socioeconomic issues. We show favoritism based on political stances and a thousand other different ways. Favoritism is something that we, you know, sometimes we, we call it 
Call it racism. Call it, you know, applying a stereotype. Call it uh, prejudice. You, you, I don't know what you want to call it, but it, ultimately what it says is, if I am choosing this person instead of that person because this person looks better than that person does, or this person has more money than that person does, or this person comes from a better neighborhood than that person does, then that's a symbol. That's, that's absolute favoritism. It's not a symbol. It is favoritism. And if we are people in authority, clergy, of whatever denomination you happen to be, law enforcement, politicians, financiers, banks, whoever anybody ever has to go to for assistance, whoever anybody has to go to for help, whoever anybody has to go to in a time of need, we are all people that need to be incredibly careful about favoritism. A fellow was shot for holding a sandwich because he came from a he looked a particular way and he, he was in a particular neighborhood. If he looked differently and in a different neighborhood, would he still have gotten shot? Those sheriffs have chosen not to enforce particular laws because it impacts a very particular demographic of people. If the state had come up with increasingly draconian ways of dealing with drug addicts, would those sheriffs have said the same thing? No, no, you're going too far. Or would they have dropped the hammer? That fellow in New York that ran over a cop, if he looked different, if he spoke with an accent, you think he would have made it out of jail unscathed? You think he would have made it at do you think he would have made it to jail? These are all examples of how we show favoritism in our world. Now if you're saying to yourself, well, I thought you weren't going to pick on law enforcement, these are just the most high-profile examples. They're the ones that make the news. But I probably do it. You probably do it. Everybody probably does it to some extent or another. I'm asking you all to see this as a problem. See this as an issue. This is something that James, the brother of Jesus, addressed 1950 years ago. He recognized the problem at that time. There are many passages in the Bible that speak very plainly about favoritism. Paul actually writes a letter to the Corinthians based on the idea that one group of people were feasting while the, entire, while the other half of the church was sharing a loaf of bread, right, eating crumbs. One half of the church was rich. The other half of the exact same church was starving. And when Paul got wind of it, he tore a strip off them. We are all the same. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And I pray that you will always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. I pray that when you encounter another person, when you look in their eyes, you will see their soul. You will see who they really are. And that everything, everything to do with their appearance will disappear. Amen.